following somebody like Jason uh, today is uh, a real honor. And of course, as it's already been articulated uh, several times, the lineup today is amazing. And I've, I've, uh, when I asked to speak, uh, of course, I was happy to do so. But when the, I saw the rest of the lineup, I was like, well, I would have been there no matter what anyway, because this is just a, such a great lineup of folks. And I've learned a lot. And Jeff, I'm not sure if I was the one that tweeted you last night, but I definitely stalk you on Twitter. Uh, I devour everything that you write. It's amazing stuff. And uh, it's uh, been, had a profound impact on uh, forming my thought process in many ways, too, as well. I'm a big walkability advocate, uh, as well as a technologist. Um, I do uh, uh, reside in uh, Seattle and Oklahoma City kind of at the same time right now. It's the nature of my work. And uh, uh, I'm one of two people that live downtown Oklahoma City um, without a car. Um, <laughs> My wife, the other one is uh, my wife back there, Melinda. So uh, actually, that's not true. It's five of us because we have three kids. But it's been a real challenge. But I'll tell you what, though. It, we've learned so much, and we've learned to appreciate how much effort and how much uh, vision the city has. Um, they haven't just you know, called it a day and given up. They're really pushing forward. So we're really, really excited to be here. So I want to talk to you today a little bit about uh, tools of engagement and what that means um, and as it relates to kind of placemaking. Um, Everything you just heard from Jason, you absolutely need to do as soon as you leave here. But a lot of folks come to, come to me and say, I need help. I need you to help me solve a problem. And one of the first things I tell them is it's not likely that technology is going to solve your problem. But what it can do is make it a lot easier to accomplish a goal that you have or to get that problem solved. So that's what I'm going to show you today, a little bit of the background of what some of these applications can do for you, some of these tools that you can leverage. It's all about leveraging your resources and your time. That's what it's all about. And I call it uh, Paint 2.0 because, uh, as Jason just said, this really just begins with uh, on the ground, hitting the pavement, doing what you're already doing, and just enhancing those processes. So again, a lot of folks come and say, hey, I need, uh, I need uh, an application. And here we, we, we want to do a survey for cit with citizens or whatever else uh, it is. And uh, the most common, uh, you know, situation is, well, let's talk about who we're, who we're involving in this process, what the process is, what you're trying to get to, and, um, and uh, what resources you already have. Because chances are, we already have the people involved, we already have the vision, the passion, but there's just one key element, one piece that's missing. And so instead of coming in there and revamping an entire process or system and re-engineering it, we can just plug in a simple tool and make things go a lot smoother. So that's kind of what I try to focus on doing. I'm not naive. Tools uh, and the resources that you have available are not, you know, again, geared around technology. In fact, quite the contrary. Applications and, and uh, that kind of genre of resource that you have available to you is quite limited in terms of the scale. You've got a tremendous amount of resources when it comes to books, online videos, classes that you can take. And then, of course, the more practical tools like doing the, uh, uh, you know, the pop-ups and the better block projects and all, and all of those things. So, but what's funny, though, is that we still hear about technology trying to solve a lot of these problems in our communities, don't we? I, I hear it all the time. I mean, in fact, uh, discussions about uh, you know, autonomous cars and all of these uh, and, you know, latest, latest energy trends. And we, uh, we increasingly are hearing that these things are going to make our cities better. But we know that's not true, right? We're going to make our cities better. Um, I use this slide every time because it's a remarkable illustration of how much thought sometimes needs to go into improving the uh, experience, in this case of a customer, but really we're talking about citizens here, right? So improving the citizen experience. And engagement, I'm not sure if you can see the fine print as well. Oh, it's not coming through very well for, at all for you. Well, I'll tell you real quick. Starbucks, in their engagement process, there's, there's the anticipation, the enter, the engagement, the exit, and reflection steps. The engagement part is the largest block there. It includes a line, the ordering, paying for it, sitting, drinking, and working, of course. That's sitting there at your laptop. And that kind of stuff. So it's the biggest portion of the overall experience. So I want you to internalize that for a second. If the largest, the largest takeaway that citizens have um, when dealing with a, a local organization, the experience is modeled around how effective they were able to engage with you, um, then, uh, then that, that's very telling. It means we need to be focusing on that. So technically speaking, technologists, we like to put everything in buckets and draw you know, mind maps and things like that. Uh, I'm going to share with you really four areas that I think that we should focus on as communities, as organizations, as movements, if we're going to apply this layer, of, this enhancement layer to our existing uh, programs. 
The first one is channel management. I'm not going to spend much time on that because really that's responsibility mostly of your, of your local government to procure that and provide that. But I'm going to show you a little bit about what that looks like so that you have an understanding of that. It's really important that you actually understand the process that's behind that phone call or that uh, email that you sent to City Hall. Transparency is a hot button. It's a buzzword that we like to use, but it's actually important increasingly when we're creating, um, in creating communities. Um, and I'm going to show you a couple of illustrations of how that's uh, very directly related to this discussion. Ideation is kind of everybody's favorite. It's where we all get to brainstorm and debate and, and talk about uh, uh, whatever we want to be on that block or what we want that, uh, where we want the bike lanes to be. It's this crowdsourcing component of building our cities. And technology is playing an increasing role in, in, in making that happen. And the one that everybody likes to talk about is the apps, the mobile apps, right? So when we talk about apps, most everybody thinks like a mobile app. Um, virtually everyone in here probably has some sort of phone or, uh, you know, with uh, an app on it of some kind, a mobile, a smartphone that has apps on it. If you don't now, probably in the next five years you're going to have one. So this becomes kind of the face, it has been, of what we call Gov 2.0 or e-government, this movement that's um, in taking over the world, trying to improve these processes and, and in, our, in the way that we engage with our citizens as communities. And this is why. 91% of Americans are within arm's reach of their mobile devices 24-7. Now, that's a little inaccurate because we probably are never really this far away, right? It's always right here. So there's a, real, there's a reason why we've uh, put so much priority on the mobile and the mobility of information in, that cities have and how we use that device to connect, uh, uh, connect with citizens. Wouldn't be a PowerPoint without charts, right? So this is uh, another really telling um, data set for me. This is a, and it's a little technical, but just break it down for a second uh, visually for yourself. This is the mean channel importance of when engaging with brands. This is definitely in the private space, but the, the, in every case study we've ever done, the citizens act and, uh, and, and visualize and have the same expectation with the local government as they would with any type of brand. So you can just carry all this information right on over. But you'll notice that what ranks low in importance, this is the channel, it's the way that you communicate with your local government, you know, social media, Twitter, you'll see postal mail, I can't remember the last time I sent a letter you know, to City Hall or something like that. Uh, and what's interesting is that you'll see mobile applications is only halfway down the ch on the chart. But what ranks the highest are individual emails, company websites, word of mouth, and face-to-face -face interactions. So if you're a city employee in the room here today, I encourage you to take this one slide is a lesson that if you are interested in engaging with a community and you're considering some sort of technology, first stop yourself and make sure that you've done these other things first. If you're not out there in the community and you're not talking to folks, uh, chances, chances are you're, you're, you're missing a great opportunity to get feedback and engage them. This is another kind of way of, of rehashing the information. This is again going back by expectation. Uh, same kind of data, I'm going to kind of skip past it for time reasons. but. Uh, you, you'll see the value propositions go way up when we start dealing with face-to-face. -face. So again, I'm reiterating, focus on that first. Usually when we see uh, mobile applications or really any type of technology can be in implemented nowadays, we see it in the form of kind of uh, in providing information. Um, the infomaniacs, as I like to call them, are just, you know, this notion that if we just bombard people with information, then they'll suddenly become engaged, they'll suddenly become more active, and all this. And we know that's not true, right? Uh, I mean, we're inundated with information on a, on a regular basis, and it's not hard, usually, to find, um, find out what the city's budget is, for example, right? You know you can go to their website, and it's probably going to be there, or you can ask somebody pretty easily. That doesn't make them a more engaged person um, in the community. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a catalyst for change in the neighborhood. So again, I challenge my own industry all the, all the time to make sure that if we're building tools or we're requesting tools, that we're not just asking for basic information, but that we're building tools that can provide information, but encouraging that participation at the same time. I did my own in internal research, uh, asked a number of, uh, through a number of different cities, I asked uh, uh, citizens to give me what they wanted and how they wanted to interact with their community. On a, on a, this is actually in a mobile application I was talking about. But you'll see here most, most of the time, you'll, you'll see kind of a trend. You'll see a lot of, hey, I want this information. 
And that's what that's so interesting to me because actually, if you look at the if you look at the applications, we see all of these uh, information providing resources out there. But at the end of the day, we're still not satisfied with it, right? What, and the reason is is because sometimes we actually don't know how to answer this question ourselves. We're not actually wanting to know health, restaurant health ratings necessarily, but we want to know what to do about it if it's poor, right? We want to be able to make decisions based on this information. And if you're asking citizens to participate, to get involved then you've got to be able to not just provide the information, but in the same motion, allow them, to, uh, allow them to participate in that process and making it better or changing it, deviating its path, that type of thing. So I, I kind of, this is, was a, less, a life lesson for me because uh, you know, we, we don't always know what we need, right? Uh, and as a technologist, we had to kind of look past uh, some of the initial uh, results and see that people were, uh, were wanting to be involved um, but we oftentimes just frame the question incorrectly. We're getting really good at providing static information, whether it be PDFs, and now we put it into a, an app, right? So we take transit data, and now we put it into an app so you can scroll through there and you can see when the bus is coming. And now we're getting really clever. We're putting that same information on the sidewalk. But again, if I'm a transit user, if I'm there sitting on the sidewalk and I've got an issue or I have an idea, this is a one-way road. This is information only. And I'm not saying that's all bad. But again, if this is, if this, is a, a, this is a recurring issue that the number 358 Express is always late, how am I, as a citizen, going to get involved in, in, in making that better? I'm back to square one, aren't I? You've provided me with an interface, but you haven't provided me with any way of communicating back with you. So at the end of the day, I think we all just want to talk and, get, and, be, and be heard, right? We don't want just another broadcast of information. So that being said, I want to kind of show you a few examples. Um, I'm tracking personally almost 1,000 um, applications uh, from mobile apps to uh, web applications and the kind of Gov 2.0 space right now. So I'm not even going to come close to scratching the surface. Chances are you've heard a lot that I'm not going to mention today. But I am going to give you a resource at the end here that you can go and look up a lot of these by category on your own. So um, We talked about uh, uh, the channel management early on. That was the first thing I wanted to mention. And again, channel management or process management um, when it comes to citizen requests, uh, whether it be fixing a pothole or I would need information about uh, the building that's going in down the street or how, lane, how wide does this lane have to be for me to put a bike lane in. Uh, all this information, these requests for information that come in, should be and probably are going into some sort of central information sharing process in your city and your local government. It is useful for you to know if it's effective before you start your product, project. If your city uh, information or channel management process looks like this, you may have the best project and the best idea in the world, but you may come across a barrier here. Okay? Now again, you can't solve this by going out and buying the software for them and installing it or, or, or training them. But it's really helpful. In fact, I've, I've dealt with this personally, working on projects in communities where I've had an idea. We've, we've come up with, uh, uh, well, kind of like many better, better broad projects. And we, uh, we, we sit around the horseshoe and we come up with uh, ways that we can uh, you know, make, our, make our neighborhood better. And the first time we go to reach out to the city, we get shot down for whatever reason. Or, the favorite thing is you call, you hit one, or you hit nine, you hit six, you, you're trying to get to the right person, and then you have to wait for a call back, and it just takes a long time for you to get to uh, the solution. So it's helpful for you to know that that needs to be optimized, it's not being optimized. And I really am talking to a lot of the leaders, too, in, the, in these placemaking uh, movements, because, uh, again, just don't beat your head against the wall. If the processes are, are flawed, um, identify that and see what you can do to fix that. Okay, enough for channel management, that's the boring part. Transparency. Uh, transparency is, um, like I said, it's a, it's a favorite buzzword of ours. We all want open government, right? Um, but I want, you to I want you to answer this question. If you're both your local official and you're a, uh, a citizen who uh, could find yourself looking for information, if the purpose of transparency is to show what's right, well, that's really, really easy to do, okay? The hardest part to do if you're uh, coming up with uh, some sort of transparency solution is to tell people what's wrong. And I don't mean just hard because of pride, but it's harder to do because we don't usually measure as well what we're failing at. So from a technology standpoint, I get a lot of folks, who, I, I mean, this is almost a daily conversation I have. We want to appear more transparent, or we want to be more transparent. I do get, we want to appear transparent, unfortunately. But we want to be more transparent. 
And the first question I ask, well, do you want to show what you're doing right or do you want to show what's doing wrong? Because they're fundamentally approached differently. Here's a good example. This is across the river. The uh, city of De Leon in uh, Texas uses an open data portal. Uh, this is basically just a, they coalesce a bunch of data sets. They provide it to uh, the local uh, you know, the citizens there. And it has acted not just as a resource for citizens to say, hey, who's, well, in this case, who has warrants in their city? You can see there. They have a bunch of information on there. But it started to become an internal tool, tool as well because what they realized is that they weren't sharing information inside their own organization very well. So by providing a tool that was promoting transparency, was becoming more open as a, as a uh, city, they also actually improved uh, their own communication internally. Uh, this is actually one that directly relates to the placemaking. I, from personal experience, having been a councilman, I've, I've, co I've come across and uncovered countless studies um, you find in some fi filing cabinet, and you realize an enormous amount of research has likely been done in your community, and chances are, to solve a problem that you directly are interested in solving. Uh, I remember finding one particular study by OG&E that was done in my small town uh, back in the 70s, and it was, it was exactly the problem that we were having in the discussion that day, uh, that night, that the council meeting. Uh, why in the world was this information not available to us? So I encourage cities to go back kind of and add that information and make it available to the public. And chances are not only are you going to help answer questions that you may already have, but you're also going to incentivize and make it easier for citizens to do the same thing. You'll start to see more folks like Jason step up and say, with that little piece of information, I can go a long way. I can go a long way. This is a, just an example of showing what's wrong and not showing what's right. Google does this. You know, they could put green dots all along there and just show every day that they got right, but they're not. They're showing you what's wrong. And that's important. OK, a couple examples. Engaging plans is one of my favorites. If you're a planner uh, or in GIS or any type of uh, uh, major kind of urban planning project uh, uh, capacity, you've probably heard of uh, Urban Interactive Studios. They're a great, great company that has built this product. The, 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 the takeaway with a, a platform like Engaging Plans or any of these other kind of ideation uh, platforms is that you're not just, again, putting out information. So this application allows you to put a, as a calendar, allows you to put that information out there in terms of what meetings are coming up. You can uh, see the projects that have been proposed. You can see how much they're going to cost. You can get all this information. But the great thing is every component on the entire application has a reply feature or some sort of feedback mechanism. So none of this process is one way. In fact, the entire process is two way. So they, uh, and then they react to the feedback that they get, and it's a very um, fluid process. So it's a great, fantastic application. It's ridiculously cheap. So if you are looking for a solution, if you've got a project in mind, and you need that application layer to help you go uh, take, the next, uh, take the next level, there's a great one there for you. Here's one that's actually used here in Oklahoma City, Popularize. Um, it is uh, uh, another ideation platform. Uh, it's used here in Pl uh, Plaza District by uh, Kristen and the great folks there. And what it allows you to do is take a building and say, what would I do with this building? If I uh, had, could do anything with it, what would I, what we want to do with it as a community? And you can, again, aggregate your feedback on it and then pitch it to a property owner. You can come up with your own budget for it. It's a great resource, a great tool. So if you've got something in your neighborhood that you want to see improved, and again, you're trying to figure out how to, uh, how to aggregate that information together and make it easy for people to understand, this is a great resource. I did show, you know, say that information only applications, uh, generally speaking, I frown on, but there are a few good ones out there. Um, I'm not even come close to mentioning all of them. This is just one example. It does show local issues that uh, are in the community. Uh, and again, this is really useful for those quick references. This is where I usually su suggest you um, come up with an application like this or use an application like this. If you've got an, a, a neighborhood that's activated and trying to get more engaged, providing information kind of quickly, uh, demographic information, can help them do the research they need to stay more involved. The most popular, by far, common uh, you know, context or application uh, of technology right now in government, at least the most you know, popular in the media, is in this 311 space. What uh, applications like C-ClickFix allow you to do is take your phone, if you see a pothole, take a picture of it, and it immediately gets sent to the city, right? Uh, it takes all that middle process of mystery, uh, we go back to that channel management, 
It takes all the mystery out for you. So if you know there's something wrong and you need to be able to fix it, and you want to be able to fix it, all you need to do is have your mobile device with you, snap a picture, and it's taken care of. The city of Oklahoma City does use this. There's a number of cities in Oklahoma that use this. Um, it's uh, got widespread. Uh, so, and it doesn't just have to be an app. Uh, web to mobile technology exists like QR codes. QR codes is a, is a fancy way of like a, saying like a barcode. A, you can scan it with your device and instantly get information. Um, one small town in, in uh, another town is actually in Texas as well. Uh, the, the city manager there became very popular uh, because he put QR codes on everything, every asset, every public asset. Even the vehicles had QR codes. So you could walk up as a citizen, scan on the side of a truck a utility truck, and instantly know what that truck was doing, what work order they were working on, and a bunch of other information as well. So it was a great tool and a great resource. So if you uh, need to uh, coalesce information around, uh, let's say, improving an intersection, put up one of these uh, flyers, put a QR code on there, and link it to whatever website, your Facebook page, your Twitter page, whatever you've got. It's a great little resource. It doesn't require you to invest in technology or buy an application or anything. Okay, I told you I was going to give you a resource where you can do a lot more of this um, research on your own. And that place is called Civic Commons. So Civic Commons is what you need to write down if you want to remember that. Um, they have 677 apps in their database that they're monitoring as well. So if you have any questions about technology, you want to know um, how to make your life a little bit better when it comes to uh, uh, whatever project you're using, using technology as a handset, this is a great resource. And I had to include the paint, even though you include the paint. Because honestly, paint is my favorite tool. I am the technologist professionally, but my favorite, favorite way to make a difference in my community is to grab a bucket of paint and get out there. When I came back from Iraq um, about 10 years ago and started to get involved in my community right before I got on the council, that's how I started. I started with a can of paint, and I realized uh, we didn't have all the tools that we needed as a small community, so I started to use my geek uh, skills to try to, to solve that. But we started with paint. We, and they aggregated into uh, building uh, parks and uh, eventually led to getting all new sidewalks and, and, and that type of thing. Before Better Block, Better Block had, a, had a brand, we were doing Better Block projects. So um, I encourage you to start there. That's what I'm, what I'm getting at. Start there and then move on. If you have, need, uh, need the additional assistance, the technology is definitely there for you. If you have any questions, uh, I'm available on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about my pet project, you can check out Walkable OKC. Thanks.